I think that all of us, at one time or another, have felt the same way that Job does in today's first reading. Now, Job is really feeling down when he's talking to his friends. He tells them how hard life is. The daily routine is starting to eat away at him. He describes the night as long, full of tossing and turning in bed until the morning comes where he goes through the motions again the next day. Job tells us how days just seem to pass by without meaning. His life has become empty and he is without hope. Now when we may feel like Job, we may decide it's time for a vacation. We may go shopping, maybe watch TV or a movie. Spend time with family and friends to help get our mind off of our troubles. Soon enough, days may go by, weeks, maybe even months. And there we are again, feeling just like Job, once more stuck in that routine that life may have become. So where is it that we find lasting hope, overwhelming joy, and a deep sense of purpose with our lives that bring meaning to this routine? Today's gospel, we see how Jesus is the answer to all of these questions. We see how Jesus gave hope to all those whom he encountered. Simon's mother-in-law, she was sick in bed with a fever. But when Jesus came, he took her hand, lifted her up, and completely healed her. What was her response to that? To immediately begin to serve Jesus and others out of joy, out of joy, out of thanksgiving. With her health restored, she rediscovered with renewed purpose what it was she was called to do to serve Jesus and to serve others in whatever way that she could. That evening, we hear how the whole city, now it wasn't a big city like Ottawa or something like that, but the whole city was gathered around the home that Jesus was staying at with the hopes of receiving their own renewal of hope, of joy, maybe a sense of purpose in their lives. Jesus worked tirelessly that evening, healing so many people who were sick, possessed with demon, demons or evil spirits, and he completely transformed their lives, physically, obviously, spiritually, and emotionally. Imagine how hopeless life would have been at that time, 2,000 years ago, for someone who was crippled, bedridden, or with a serious illness, maybe wrestling with their own demons in life. Their daily routine would have been very difficult, absent of hope, empty of joy, and maybe void of purpose or meaning. Yet when Christ healed them that evening, one by one, their restored health would have brought them much joy, thinking of all the things that they can do now that they only dreamed of doing before. Such healing would fill them with joy at this transformation that had taken place at the hands of Jesus. Let's imagine a crippled boy at this time who would have been amongst the people around the door where Jesus was staying. People were pushing forward, desperate to be healed, to have their lives completely turned around and transformed in a positive way. So if we imagined a crippled young boy, he would have probably spent days, weeks, maybe even years, watching his friends, his brothers, his sisters, running around playing. And he was dreaming, maybe one day I'll be able to walk. So imagine his joy when he was healed. Imagine the laughter and the tears that would come from his parents who would watch him walk, run, jump, and play with his friends for the first time. My friends, that is the hope that is the joy that we encounter when we encounter the Lord and are healed of our brokenness, of our sins, of the things that weigh us down. Once they're washed away by the Lord, we are filled with that same joy, that same hope, and that same direction and meaning in our life comes through. That next morning in the gospel, we hear how Jesus went to a quiet place alone to pray, not to heal more people, not just to relax, but to pray. Before long, we hear how Simon and the others were searching for him. In fact, the translation says, hunted for him. Certainly, there must have been more people that wanted to see him that day. Imagine, 
People may have missed out on the healing the night before. The lineups were too long. They may have wanted to thank him for their transformed lives today. Waking up completely healed and restored. Yet with all the demands on Jesus' time, Jesus took the time to pray. Notice how Jesus is always teaching us lessons in our life by his words and his actions, regardless of the scripture passage or the event. He's always our role model in our lives. So let's look at three practical lessons that we can glean from these readings. The first, take time to pray each morning. We're never too busy to pray. Sometimes we may say that we're busy, we don't have time to pray. Regardless of how busy our lives are, we need to spend some time in prayer each day. Think about how busy Jesus would have been with a whole city at his front door, pushing in out of desperation. This is the guy that worked miracles. They would have been living with their illnesses, their whole lives for many of them, pushing forward, pushing forward, trying to get close to Jesus to be healed. The desperation in their eyes. Jesus was very busy. Yet, with all this, what did he do? He got up the next morning early when he was alone just to take a few minutes to pray. Now, if Jesus, who is divine, the Son of God, with no sin, still needs time to pray, thinks it's that important to take time and spend time speaking with God the Father, so much more so do you and I need to take time to pray to God the Father, making it a priority in our lives to draw strength from God, courage from God, gratitude from God, thanking Him for the blessings of a new day, the blessings in our life that are countless. Take the time to pray each day. Second possible lesson is similarly, we need to turn to God when we have lost hope, when we have felt empty of joy, maybe if we're confused about our purpose in life. We saw today how Jesus restored the hope, the joy, and the purpose in life of many people by his healing hand. We too need to remember that when we get stuck, maybe in the routine of life, or feeling down like Job, or crushed by the heaviness of responsibilities, or life, or obligations, that all we need to do is turn to the Lord. Nothing else will do. We need to turn to God for his loving and healing presence to be restored. We need to ask. Sometimes that means coming to the front door of where the Lord resides here, St. Monica Church. We can press on during the week. It's not just about Sunday Mass. Church is open during the week. Come by, stop for some a quiet time of prayer. It's very quiet here, a beautiful place to pray for the Lord. If we need that time, you find a difficult place, don't know where to go, stop in here. Take a five minute, 15 minute break from work or school or, well, maybe I shouldn't say that about school, but anyway, you, you can think about it. Find time, wherever it may be, to spend time turning to the Lord in our times of difficulty. The second lesson. The third lesson, if we want to live lives full of joy, J-O-Y, lives full of joy, we need to follow and live this acronym. Putting Jesus first, J, others second, O, and yourself third, Y. Jesus first, others second, yourself third. And this is presented to us in this example of Simon's mother-in-law. Once she was healed of her fever, of her illness, once she encountered the Lord, she was filled with this joy. So much so that she turned to serving Jesus and others right away. I think it's important maybe we take a minute to think about how powerful the witness of this woman was. This it was an older woman, probably sick in bed. But once Jesus healed her, her response was to immediately she began to serve. I think that's a very powerful witness. Now, if we imagine ourselves, imagine myself sick in bed, maybe with the flu, and suddenly, boom, just like that, feeling better, perfectly healed. I don't know about you, but I would probably take at least an hour or two to take it easy, maybe enjoy something that I've been thinking about doing for the last couple days, or just, you know, wow, I can breathe again, or my throat isn't sore, or I'm not hacking up a lung. You know, you just take a moment to at least enjoy it. 
do something you enjoy. Or maybe you'll take the rest of the day to relax before you go to back to work or school to uh, start off your duties again. But it doesn't say that. This woman was so moved by joy, so moved by gratitude, it says she began to serve Jesus and others in whatever way that she could. I think that's a powerful witness of joy and when we are restored and healed by the Lord. Therefore, why not every day when we get up, if we're blessed with good health, to thank the Lord for that good health and begin to serve God first, others second, and ourselves third. This life of service is at the core of the gospel message. When we look at the two main commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, and soul, to love your neighbor as yourself. May God bless you and your loved ones with good health, lasting hope, and overwhelming joy.